Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Kelly here. Whether you are new to investing, or a proud member in Wall Street Bets, or even an investing pro like our Warren Buffett Coco, there's a chance that you are investing the wrong way. And unfortunately, if you make these investment mistakes, you could be possibly losing hundreds to thousands of dollars all without you realizing it. You could still be blur blur and be like, huh? I could lose money, man? Way oh. So, in this video, I will tell you six ways that you could be investing wrongly. Personally, I've made some of these mistakes myself. And if you are aware of all these, you will be able to avoid them and you can hot big big later. Sounds good? Let's not waste any time and let's jump right in. One of the most common mistakes an investor will make is not understanding the stock that he is buying into. Especially nowadays, with meme stocks like GME, AMC, Blackberry, Clovis appearing left and right, many investors be like apes together strong. They won't even bother to look into the company that they are buying into. Yes, there are a lot of winners who got rich by investing in meme stocks, but there are also a ton of people who lost their life savings too. Now, I don't really blame them. It's actually not easy to understand everything about the company, especially to a new investor. All the financial data will seem like alien language, like what PE ratio la, what earnings per ratio la, what tap equity la, and so on. Ain't nobody got time to understand that. It is much easier to go to Wall Street Bets do some 5 minutes research and be like, if he likes the stock, then I like the stock. So much so that even our Warren Buffett got called Beta Han and had to come out and give a gentle reminder to us not to gamble on stocks. So what can you do? Obviously, first, stop investing like an ape. That's a very big difference between investing and gambling. If you are new to investing, there's safer ways to grow your money. I've done videos sharing all the ways that you can invest as a new investor. You can check the video up here if you want. But in summary, the few ways are index funds, robo advisor, and actively managed funds, all of which will allow you to invest safely while you are learning how to invest properly. Second, when you are buying stocks, at the very least, try to understand a little about the company that you are buying into. Like, how are they earning their money? What's their future plans? Do they have a competitive advantage? Here's a tip for you. YouTube is a good place to start researching. For example, let's say you want to buy Palantir. Just go search on YouTube. There are many YouTubers who have done the research. Watch a few of them, but don't just watch the supporters. Also look for people who don't like the stock. After that, you will know the company a little better and you will be able to form your own opinion about whether the company is good or not. The second mistake an investor has is lack of patience. There are so many impatient investors. Today, he buys into a stock. Tomorrow, he will be expecting the stock to go to the moon. He will be like, where Lampo? Hey hello, fundamentally good stocks won't shoot up 800% in a year. Okay, okay, Tesla is different. Let me rephrase, most fundamentally good stocks won't go up so fast. Just in case you're not aware, behind every stock counter is a real company. And companies need time to grow. They need time to hire employees, develop their product, sell it, improve on it, all of which takes time, easily a few years. One such example is Amazon which was unprofitable for almost 9 years after listing. But after that, it starts shooting up like a rocket. This was the same for Tesla. They weren't profitable for so many years until quite recently. Historically, the S&P 500 has only delivered an average return of 10% a year. Just 10% a year, nothing fantastic. Even the growth stocks that's in S&P 500, represented by VOOG, the fastest of the fastest only gave around 17% on average. Investing should be more like watching paint dry or watching grass grow. So this mistake is easy to fix. Basically, you just need to get used to not getting such a high return. Don't aim for 20% return every other week. As I say, high risk, high reward. Something that can go up so fast will also go down super fast. Just ask those GameStop bet holders who bought in at $475. They cry until no tears, also no use. Ah. Instead, just invest in fundamentally good stocks, then just hold up. Over the long term, the market is a weighing machine. If the stocks are good, these stocks can only go up. Speaking of stocks, if you want to track your stocks and crypto investments, check out ShareSide. Now, you may think that ShareSide is just a normal portfolio tracker, but no no. ShareSide can do a lot more than just track your investments. First, it can automatically track all your dividends received. Second, if you invest in overseas stocks, it will also track your currency gains or losses, ShareSite will display all this data nice nice for you so that you will know if you are one step closer to financial freedom or not. One more bonus feature, if you are using interactive brokers, they can automatically track your investments for you. Sounds good? You can sign up using my link at sharesite.com slash investing 
or just click the link down below. If you have only 10 stocks, you do not need to pay anything. But if you need to trap more stocks, you get 4 months worth of premium account for free. So if you are interested, head over to sharesite.com slash Investing to sign up. Alright, let's get back to our video. The next mistake an investor can make is diversifying wrongly. You may be like, what you mean no? All the YouTubers and blogs always tell me to diversify well? Yes, that's true. But there's also such thing as over diversifying. It's like fried rice. It's okay if you just add chicken, pea, egg, carrot and soy sauce. But if I go add more stuff like bubble tea, durian, ketchup, cheese, ice cream, even the fried rice will call police already. It's okay to diversify. In fact, it's encouraged because if you diversify properly, it will reduce your risk. Because if you invested in 5 companies, even if one company developed or went bankrupt, you still have 4 other companies to back you up. Unless the 4 other companies is GameStop, Blackberry, AMC, Clovis, then we have a big problem. But why is over diversifying bad? Let's imagine you have 50 stocks in your portfolio. Let me ask you this, how are you planning to keep up to date with 50 stock news? I'm already having a hard time to keep up to date to even 1 or 2 companies, let alone 50 companies and that has the same level of risk as not diversifying. The second reason why diversifying is bad is, diversification may preserve wealth but concentration builds wealth. Sure, you reduce your risk of losing money but at the same time, because you are so diversified, even if a stock shown by 500%, it will just be a small part of your portfolio. You will just quite small small. So how to fix this mistake? First, reduce the number of stocks in your portfolio. Studies have shown that portfolios with around 12 to 18 stocks will have the maximum benefit of diversification. Personally, I would just recommend around 5 stocks. You don't need to have that many stocks to reduce your risk. What's more important is that you understand the stocks that you are investing in and they will reduce your risk by a lot. Second, don't just diversify between companies. You should also diversify between industries. Imagine if you have invested in only airline companies, SIA, United Airlines, Delta Airlines. Sure, they are different companies but when the pandemic happened, all the airlines did very badly when no one is able to travel. Then the airlines will be like, you die, I die, everybody die. So remember, don't over diversify and diversify between industries. Fourth mistake, and this is a classic one, trying to time the market. Every day, I see people saying stuff like, Aiya, the stock went up, can still buy now. Ah. Wow, the stock went down, do you think it still can go lower? Ah? Then there's also some investors who like to buy in, pull out, buy in, pull out. Just so you know, pulling out isn't always the best. If the pros can't even predict where the stock will go in the short term, what makes you think you can? Think man, think! Here's the simple truth. In the short term, nobody knows where the stock will go. Maybe it will go up, maybe it will go down. But that's one thing we know, it will definitely go right. That's because in the short term, the market is a voting machine or a popularity contest. The more people buy into the stock, the more it will go up. That's all. It's like guessing what the weather will be like tomorrow. Nobody knows. Even the weather forecast and Google get it wrong all the time. In the research by JP Morgan, they found that if you stay fully invested, you will have the best return. But if you are always trying to time the market, trying to buy at the lowest point but end up missing the 10 best days out of 20 years, your return will drop by more than half. Miss out 20 best days, your return will be negative already. In another research by Schwab, Perfect timing will have the best results, but unless you are fast for, you will never have perfect timing. It's more likely that you will have bad timing and perform worse off than people who had just held on. So this is Bill. Bill doesn't time the market. Be like Bill. Next mistake, using the wrong broker to buy your stock. This is a super common mistake. Take for example, DBS Wickers. On their website, they will say they have competitive pricing which is just $25. Then, when you compare to Tiger Brokers or Mumu, which is like $1 per order, it makes you wonder what does DBS Wickers mean by competitive huh? pricing. So here's the problem, if you are using the wrong broker to buy your stocks, you will be losing a lot of money. Let me show you. Let's say if you just do a normal dollar cost average, you buy one stock every month. If you use bank brokers like DBS, UOB, OCBC, they will charge you a competitive pricing of $25 each time. So in a year, you will spend $300 on trading commissions. 
But if you use a low cost brokerage like Tucker Brokers, Umu, Interactive Brokers, you will only spend $1 per trade. In a year, you will spend $12 on trading commissions. $12 versus $300 a year. I don't know about you, but with that $288 which I saved, I can already bring my wife go Ting Tai Fung and eat all the Xiao Long Bao she wants. I know some people be like, why are all these low cost brokerage so cheap one? Safe or not ah? Uh, little the cow and the tiger run away with all my money, how? There's a few reasons why this won't happen. First, all these brokers are MAS regulated. That means they have to follow strict rules and cannot anyhow do funny stuff. Second, your money are stored in a separate bank account from the company's bank account. So the broker cannot simply just touch your money. Third, your assets are usually stored with another custodian. So even if the broker goes bankrupt, your stocks will be alright. Fourth, a lot of these brokers have SIPC insurance for US stocks. So if anything bad happens to the broker, SIPC will refund you all your losses on US stocks up to 500k. Personally, I would say that these low cost brokers are as safe as normal bank brokers. So if you are still using bank brokers, come over and start using low cost brokers. I have made several videos to help you decide which is the best brokers. Check that up here if you are interested. Six mistake which a lot of investors make. Not having a goal and a plan. Yes, yes, we know that the goal of investing is to make money. Or like what the Chinese like to say, what big big. But how big? How big? You need to have a more concrete goal. Do you want to earn $1 from investments this year? Or do you want to earn 100 k this year? Depending on your goal, there's a huge difference to how you invest. Once you know your goal, then you can start planning. And no, plans like buy low, sell high, or apes to get strong is not a plan. Obviously, a good analogy to having a goal and a plan is like this. With a goal in mind, you now have a compass. You know you need to go in this direction. But straight is not always the right way. You might accidentally walk onto the PIE and gonna langa or even worse, gonna stomp. So you need to have a plan. Having a plan is like having a map. With a map, you will know how to navigate your way around so that you can reach your destination safely. What does this mean in investing terms? Maybe your goal is to achieve financial independence by 40 years old or maybe it's to earn enough so that you have enough to retire on. Once you know how much you need to have, the next step is to figure out where to put your money. Maybe it could be robo advisors or ETFs or growth stocks or dividend stocks, all of which have different risks and rewards. robo advisors, ETFs, dividend stocks will give you around 4-10% to annual return over the long term, while growth stocks will give you much higher return, maybe 10-15% to annual return over the long term. Once you know what to buy, the last step is to know when to buy. Personally, I would recommend just dollar cost average. This strategy is super simple. You just consistently buy into it every month. Stock goes up, you buy. Stock goes down, you also buy. So simple. If the stock is good, over the long term, you will do well. So all in all, that was the 6 ways you could be investing wrongly. What other mistakes you could be making right now? Let me know down in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday and sometimes Friday.